So um, I feel super honored to be here and to be sharing this recipe with you. Um, I really strongly believe that food was the number one um, um, medicine for me. And, um, and I just am so passionate about learning about all the different types of qualities in the foods and how they, how they react and respond to your digestive system. I feel like I was kind of my own petri dish in a way, like I would just take something and see how it worked and so I've been so focused on that for so long that now it's, um, it's such a joy to be able to share what, what I've learned. Um, so um, I will go ahead and get started with the recipe. Does this work now if you, or do you have to light it still? You have to light it. Okay. So, um, Today we're going to be making um, a really simple dish, and actually, I'm going to make it. Okay, great. Um, and it's it's beets and carrots with caramelized onions, cumin seeds, rock salt, and ghee. That's the only. Those are the only ingredients for this dish. It's so delicious. It tastes like a million things have gone into it, but it's really just very simple. Um, so we're going to start out with using some ghee. Raise your hand if you've never heard of ghee before. Okay, so everyone knows, so ghee is clarified butter, as you all know, and um, it's wonderful for the fall season because, raise your hand and tell me if anyone knows why it's beneficial to use ghee in this season. Deep, deep. Um. Because your vata will be increasing, so it's nourishing and unctuous, so it will replenish its dry. Very true. So it helps decrease vata because it's unctuous and also nourishing. Any other reasons why we would be wanting to use ghee in this season? It's cooling? Yes, it's cooling as well. So I'm going to use about I like ghee. <laughs> so, Sanjay D taught me that. <laughs> um, I would say, I'm, I'm making quite a bit here, um, so I'd say about four tablespoons of ghee are going into this. Um, also, on, from a Western standpoint, or ghee is really high in vitamins A, D, E, and K, and it also has omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. So you can tell your friends who are worried about you eating ghee, that it's really beneficial for you, and you have some Western science to back it up, too. Okay, so we're going to let our ghee heat up, and next we're going to add cumin seeds. So, cumin seeds, does anyone, can anyone tell me um, what cumin seeds are good for, as far as digestion is concerned? Any specific qualities they might bring about? Okay. So cumin seeds help with, with the digestive, digestive process. They help increase your agni, or your digestifier, and so does the um, ghee as well. So whenever we're cooking vegetables, it's always good to add a little bit of cumin. Not only does it help with the digestive process, but it also helps decrease gas and bloating. So I'm going to add about, uh, I'd say, this is Sanjay Ji taught me how to cook, and so <laughs> I never use measurements either. I just do it by eye. Um, I think that's like a tablespoon and a half of cumin. Some students have really learned that. <laughs> so you're going to let these cumin seeds really start to get brown, and you can start to smell even now. Some of you might be able to catch a whiff. Um, and this is basically, this cumin seeds are really developing their flavor right now and opening up. So if you add the vegetables right away, it doesn't quite have that delicious, nutty, toasted flavor. So it's always good to toast them a little bit first and make sure you get them a little bit golden. And in the winter time, if you were making this recipe, you could also add mustard seeds, but they're a little bit heating, so you wouldn't want to use them in the, the fall season. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are getting nice and toasted brown, 
And then we're going to add our onions. So I used a yellow onion today. Um, and the reason I used a yellow onion, oh, I forgot, are you getting a wooden um, serving utensil? The reason I used yellow onion is because red onions are more heating, and yellow and white onions are not as heating. They're still slightly heating, but when you cook them, they actually become sweet in taste, and they are not, they're not um, as heating, it's still a little bit nice, Okay. So, and if you notice that smell, raise your hand if you can smell the delicious onion smell. So that smell, um, it's called, when something smells really good and makes your appetite increase, that's called rochuk. And there are certain things like garlic and onions that make something rochuk, or it, it's like it already starts the digestive process before you even start eating. It starts your salivary glands going and it makes you hungry. So it's really important that you want to be eating what you're eating. You're not just choking something down because it's supposed to be good for you. Because your digestion starts even before you're putting the food into your mouth. So, and another trick Sanjay G taught me is to always make sure your onions are well caramelized before you add your other ingredients. Because that again is how you get that really delicious flavor. So if they're not caramelized, it will still taste okay, but it won't have that super delicious wow factor, <laughs> which is what we all want, right? Um, so as that's cooking, I'll tell you a little bit more about um, our other two ingredients, which are beets and carrots. So um, one thing that I find amazing about Ayurveda is that you, a lot of the fruits and vegetables look like the organ that they're supposed to be, that they're helping. For instance, if you look at a bunch of grapes, it looks like the alveoli in our lungs. And it's, grapes are really good for respiratory um, diseases. Or if you look at a pomegranate and you slice the pomegranate open, it looks like a lactating breast. And pomegranates are really good for lactating women. Um, what's another one? Really Coconut. Coconuts, good for the head. Um, walnuts. The brain. Walnuts, good for the brain. So beets look, if you look at them, they look like a heart. Um, and they're really good for your heart and for your blood. So I like to always, whenever I eat, I think it's a really good practice to think about what the food is doing as you're eating it, because that will also help with A, your digestive process, and B, it's just nice to know. It's kind of, I think it's good to, to imagine whatever is supposed to be happening actually happening in your body. Um, okay. So beets are good for the heart and the blood. They're very sweet in taste, so they're going to be really good, sweet and nourishing for the fall season. Carrots, what do you think carrots are good for? The eyes. Yes. And if you slice a carrot down, like you're just chopping carrot slices, and you look at it, it looks like an eye. It looks like there's a pupil in the middle, and then there's like an iris on the outside of it. And I just think that's so fascinating to me. Um, I just, it's amazing. Carrots are also sweet, but they're not, they're not necessarily into decreasing, right? More neutral. Yeah, I mean, so neither too hot. Not too cold. So, this needs to cook for a little bit longer. Does anyone have any questions while we're waiting for it to cook about any of the ingredients or spices or herbs or? The, the butter. It could be any brand of butter or any specific butter. Oh yeah, okay. So when you, you there's, um, so ghee is actually clarified butter. Mm -hmm. So you take the butter and you boil it down to the point where all the milk solids fall to the bottom and they, there's a foam at the top too that comes that usually settles to the bottom. So um, there are a couple brands that I recommend if you don't want to make it yourself 
Mm -hmm. um, one is Ancient Organics. Mm -hmm. They use Strauss butter, which is local, and if their cows are grass-fed, and they chant mantras while they're <laughs> making the ghee, and they make it on a waxing full moon. So that's very typical or traditional Ayurvedic way of making ghee. Um, and another way, or another brand, all right, that's, that's the only brand I actually recommend if you don't cook it yourself, but if you do cook it yourself, you can use um, the Strauss butter is the best, unsalted always, because the salt will, will retain the water, so you won't be able to clarify yeah, all the Vedica way. brand. The best, yeah, best brand is our brand. And, <laughs> and we, we here. sell yeah. ghee here too, which I totally forgot about, which is yeah. the best, because they use, we use Strauss butter as well, and it's infused with Vedica love. So, <laughs> highly recommend Ayurvedic. Are Ayurvedic dishes always vegetarian? No. Not always. Correct me if I'm wrong, Sanjay G, but I, the way that I have sort of understood meat is that it's to be used medicinally. So it's not like everyone should be eating this much quantity, or it depends on your constitution and the season, and what type of meat it is. And, and how it cooks, what? It's the same, always at beta. Always at beta. It's always vegetarian at beta. Oh, here, yeah. Okay, so these are caramelized enough. If anyone wants to come and take a look, they could be, go a little bit longer, just in the essence of saving time. I'm just gonna keep them about right here. This is like kind of your bare minimum caramelization. And then we're just going to add the beets and carrots. I'm not going to add the whole thing because it'll take too long. So first, just kind of stir and get the ghee and the cumin seeds all over, covering everything. And because these are shredded, they won't take very long to cook. You can also chop them um, into small pieces and do the same recipe. If, if shredding does take a long time, but it takes longer to cook that way, so it's up to you whether you want to have longer prep time or longer cook time. Okay, so once those are sort of mixed in, then you're going to add your final two ingredients, which are turmeric, which Caitlin spoke a little bit about. Um, turmeric is like the ideal spice for this fall season. Um, it's cooling, it's blood purifying, anti-cancer, um, bitter in taste, really good for pizza anti-inflammatory, prevention of Alzheimer's, like the list goes on and on. So I think having at least turmeric in, turmeric in at least one or two of your th things that you eat every day is um, ideal. And then after you put the turmeric in, mix it around a little bit, then you add your rock salt. So. Himalayan rock salt is the pink Himalayan rock salt is our salt of choice because rock salt is not as heating as sea salt um, or table salt. And it also has more minerals in it. So I only cook, my only salt that I use is rock salt, and I only use. Um, ghee for all of my oil, and I find that that's a really good way to make sure you're getting it enough ghee in your diet. Okay. And a bit more salt. Is there anyone who should not have ghee? I from my understanding, everyone should have a little bit of ghee, even if you are overweight or obese. But 
not if you are overweight or obese, then have a very small portion of ghee. Um, and if you are of average size, I th it kind of just depends on your your body size and um, and the season and everything how much you should be having. But um, if you if you're only eating ghee as your only fat, you can eat a lot more ghee than you think you would be be able to, like if you're not eating animal protein and you're not eating cheese and you're not eating all of these things that um, are not re recommended necessarily all the time in Ayurveda, um, you can have more, more ghee. Would you agree with that? So that's basically it. Then you just put the lid on. Set it and forget it. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's pretty much the, that's how you make the bee, ghee and carrots. And you can do this recipe with any type of vegetable. So you can do it with squash, you could do it with sweet potatoes, um, uh, what else are really, do opo squash. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. That's the recipe. Thank you all for listening. And we'll be, um, in a couple minutes, I'll be handing these out in yeah. samples.